I now need to dissolve the styrofoam mold using some acetone. And it's slowly eating away at the styrofoam. I'm gonna poke it with a stick. Let's see what's happening here. When oh. it comes to firing the rocket, nitrous oxide will flood into this end of the tube and ignite, burning the rubber from the inside out. The hot combustion gases will then exit at high speed from the other end, generating that all-important thrust. Our rocket is so big, we've had to request special permission to fly it from the Federal Aviation Authority. They've given us the go-ahead, but we have to be ready to launch in just three days' time. We've got a huge amount of work to do before then, and we can't cut corners. Building a rocket is an exacting task. Everything has to be precisely made, or the rocket just won't fly. We have to put something like five or six hundred holes that are drilled and tapped into these bulkheads, and if a single one of them has something go wrong, that we drill too far or break off a tap or anything like that, then it's back to square one. So right now, I'm working on a piece that costs more than a few cars I've owned. And it's very scary, because if I screw this up, we don't get a launch. This high pressure work is endless. I now need to drill 200 holes partway through the section of the rocket. If I drill all the way through, I'll ruin this $2,000 part and set us back a couple of weeks, time we just don't have. In an incredibly lucky twist of fate, this cheap, cheap laying around chunk of PVC that we had slips exactly over the shoulder of my drill and makes a perfect depth chart. This should stop me drilling all the way through and make the task slightly easier. We've got just two full days left to finish building our rocket. The main body and motor are coming together, but there are a number of key components we haven't even started on. We don't even have our parachute thing figured out yet. We haven't even started mounting any of our electronics. We have a, a number of things that aren't even touched yet. At the last launch, we'd hoped to test the parachute, flight controller, and camera systems. We're coming down, boys. We're not but the crash landing killed us. Whoa, look at that burnout. And now we have no choice but to use the same untested systems in this rocket. Pretty robust. Be oh, we blew off the yeah. power supply. It's a real blow. Putting these systems together is painstaking work. So I press it and hold it. And we're recording. I can check how everything works on the ground, but I can't replicate the massive G-forces we hope this baby can generate. And with any luck, this will survive many, many, many Gs. To save time, we've had our local metal shop make up the fins. They are designed to keep the rocket headed in a straight line. Certainly looks a lot meaner with this on. And now comes the all-important eye lining up. Try squinting. Yep, squinting works. Looks good. It's about 9 30, 10 o'clock now, and but I can't put another rocket piece together until I've eaten some food because I'm getting really, really hungry. I'm gonna be leaving in between, you know, nine, ten hours. It leaves us, you know, nine or ten hours to get work done. I don't know how much sleep we get in that time, but, uh, you know, this rocket's going to be pretty cool. It's worth missing a couple hours of sleep for. We're still not ready for the launch, but we've just got to add a touch of style. Yeah, rockets look more rockety when they have rockety paint jobs. 
I've never spent so much time working on something that's going to last so short an amount of time once it's doing what it's supposed to do. Tomorrow, the launch site. Now, we need sleep. I got the USDA recommended eight minutes of sleep last night. I think that's what it is, right? Eight minutes? I just got five more back here, so uh, you know, I'm doing a little better. It's been a long haul. We've been working solid two weeks on this thing, and uh, it's finally coming to fruition. This is our final trip to the launch site, and the pressure is on. The authorities have informed us we have to launch before 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, because after that, they shut down the airspace for military testing. Here we are, another weekend at the rocket range. Jeff hasn't seen our rocket since the day he helped pour the rubber fuel. We've done a lot since then. Let's do it, guys. I think this is where it gets worrisome because this is where the rocket experts start going, ooh, yeah, uh, about that. That's yeah, not what I that's not really uh, what I had in mind. We got a little surprise. We, uh, we made some design choices. Oh, look at that. We got tracking targets. Oh, you guys are unbelievable. We were calling them racing stripes. I got tears in my Oh, look at that. Check this thing out. Oh, you guys, unbelievable. Wow. It seems like Jeff's impressed. And that makes me really happy. The guys are doing great. You know, a few weeks ago, starting off with the little small motors and then stepping up into the big ones. You know, it's taken most of the guys out here several years to get where these guys have gone in just a few short weeks. Thanks for the good report, Jeff. But the fact is, we still have a ton of work to do and less than 20 hours to complete it. We took the rocket apart so we could transport it safely. So our first job is to reassemble it. Let's feed this through. And it's absolutely critical we rig the parachute recovery system. So this didn't take too much of we really should have sorted this out back in the shop. <laughs> now we've left it to the last minute. I don't think it's ever good to finish your project too far in advance. You know, you gotta be, for best results, you have to be working on it right until the bitter end, I think. My policy. Now we have to figure out how to pack everything into the rocket so the parachute comes out cleanly and at the right time. I'm gonna have to pull them out. They should all be splitting one, so it should be halfway in between. It's really, really hard to get right, and one of the biggest causes of failure in amateur rocketry. Is it gonna go on top of the chute? It's getting late, and this is the most important part of this project right now. We have our main rocket body and fuel worked out, but this is how we're gonna get the thing back. Everybody's tired. The lines of communication are starting to fray. Is it, isn't this ring the only point of attachment? I, 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 no, okay. you've answered this the is question. What, this is what we did. Absolutely. We're gonna set it up, and we're gonna do a dry run. You're gonna run the show, okay? okay. Ends on this, right? After hours of discussion and trial and error, we think we've got it. At any rate, it all seems to be working in the benign conditions of our hangar. This rocket is a one-shot deal. I really hope everything works tomorrow. If the recovery system fails, the rocket will disintegrate on impact with the Earth. The cameras and all record of how high the rocket went will be destroyed. So I think everybody's now satisfied with the parachute uh, configuration. My next job is to load the camera with a memory card. It's nothing fancy, just a regular card, like the one in my personal camera. I think we give it one more sanity check and then we're putting on the payload tube. The payload tube is the last job for tonight. The rocket still isn't ready, but everyone's exhausted. Time to get a few hours rest and carry on early tomorrow morning. We should have had it on the launch pad last night, and we obviously don't. So we really need to hustle this morning. If we don't launch by 11, we won't launch at all. So we've got to be really fast and really accurate for the rest of the morning while completely sleep deprived. Can we rotate it so I can see the markers? 
I'm definitely worried. It's coming down to the last couple hours, and we got to get the uh, rocket on the launch pad. My last job is to fit a GPS tracker and a radio beacon into the nose cone. One thing GPS, one three. This is how we're going to actually get the rocket back. So, ready? We have no idea where the rocket will land. It could be anywhere in a five-mile radius from the launch pad. So these devices are really important. Without them, we stand little chance of finding the rocket. Pretty quick, we'll pick it up, carry it out into the desert, put it on our stand, and get ready to fuel it. I've got a bad case of rocket bug. It's been really tough, and we've burned plenty of midnight oil. But doesn't it look cool? It's one hour until our launch window closes. We should be loading the rocket with nitrous by now. But the GPS tracker isn't working, which means taking off the nose cone. Yeah. Our radio yeah. signal sender radio guy for yeah. screws right up all of our reception for our GPS. That's a distance that seems to work. The fix is to try and space the two devices as far apart as possible so the radio beacon doesn't interfere with the GPS. Okay, oh, that's our interface. Yeah, yeah, we're good. I'm going to run over to the guys with the other radio and verify that our beacon's still on. We know the GPS is still on. If they say yes, I can call this case closed. Can you guys wait for about a minute for me to go? Jeff's ahead? ready to raise the rocket and begin fix? loading nitrous oxide, but I'm slowing him down. Man, haul no, no, ass. Just, just do haul it. Run. ass. Do it haul ass. 10,000 questions. Finally, the rocket is ready. This is it. The moment we've been waiting for. The onboard cameras are rolling. It's time to retreat to the bunker and begin loading 140 pounds of nitrous oxide into our rocket. We've got 45 minutes to launch our home-built rocket. OK, we got fuel going into the rocket. We've got about 20 pounds on board so far. Got about 120 more to go. Loading nitrous is dangerous. It could explode. Tense moment. Like if the rocket's like this, yeah, kind of this might be the longest 10 minutes of my life. We got about 60 pounds of nitrous oxide on board. Okay, someone give us a time check, please. We're in the second half of the fueling process, and hopefully it's nearing an end because um, we've only got 20 minutes left in our launch window. So we cut this one down to the wire. We've got uh, 92 pounds of fuel on board now. We're almost there. We're moments away from our one shot at videoing the curvature of the Earth. Cezina Ogus.